In war, how many choices do you think you would have if you were caught in the middle of it? For me, having experienced war myself, so far I have come up with three choices. Let me tell you about these choices with the help of a scary fairy tale. The story begins on a sunny day where three people were happily walking in the verdant forest. All of a sudden, a growling beast shows up. One person decides to face the beast and gets viciously attacked and terribly injured. The second person runs and hides in the nearest hiding place, hoping for better days when the beast is away. While the third person beats it all and runs for her life, she keeps running until she finds a safe house at the end of the forest. She bangs on the door, the door opens, and she's inside feeling safe and welcomed. Oof, what a relief. Soon, she finds out that this safe place is not as safe and not as welcoming as she originally thought. There are some people there who think that she should go back to the forest and face the beast because it's not their problem but hers only. Others think she can stay, but she should do this and that immediately so she can integrate with the people in the house. She is confused, exhausted, and scared. For many of us, human beings who are called refugees, this is our situation. This was my reality. We are the unlucky ones who were peacefully walking in our country. And suddenly, it happened that we met the beast of war. Some decided to stay in Syria and witnessed it all with its ugliness and cruelty. Others fled over the border to the neighboring countries and they are waiting there as best as they can while living in temporary camps. While the third group, like me, fled across the seas to strange unknown lands. My name is Widad. It is an Arabic name that means love. And my story goes back to around 100 years ago. I know I might look a bit younger than that, but it was a century ago when my grandfather was forced to choose one of the three available choices. Just like the second person in the fairy tale, they chose to flee from his ancestral home, Mardin in Turkey, to the nearest safe place, the city of Ras Lain in northeast Syria today. He waited there until time ran out and the hope of a return evaporated. My dad, who was born a few months after his father passed away, grew up in Syria to a single Greek mother. Although my dad had a mixed origin and spoke only Greek when he was a child, he adopted a profound nationalistic feeling of belonging to Syria and he declared it to be his homeland. In our turn, my siblings and I never questioned our identity. We were Syrians with the traces of Greek in us. However, we kept hearing the stories from the elderly in the family, telling us about how they were forced to flee their villages in Turkey and showing us keys for their abandoned homes. Reflecting on it, it seems that the feeling of being a refugee has been integrated in our collective unconsciousness since then. Despite that, we never expected that what happened to our forefathers could happen to us again. Everything around us in Syria felt static. We thought that our reality is fixed forever. But surprise, surprise, here we are becoming victims of one of the biggest human tragedies of this century. Again, the three evil choices. However, this time we chose differently and we fled as far as possible from the beast and ended up here in Sweden in 2013. Vast white spaces and icy rooftops were the only features of the country when I looked from the airplane window. I can't forget that constricted feeling I got once I set my foot out of the airport. It took me two years to get over that feeling, to accept the change. I'm sure you have heard about the fact that history repeats itself. I personally have experienced that. I never shed a tear throughout my entire journey to Sweden. But when we received the box of some of our old belongings from our home from, from Syria, I cried like never before when I saw among the stuff the key to our home, this key. 
It was a totally useless piece of metal that opens no door anymore. But for me, it represented a deep bond with my forefathers. It was a symbol that we were forced to repeat the same tragic history again. In 2015, when I was working in a shopping mall, one salesman offered me to try their organic skincare products. And while he was trying them on my hand, he asked me, where are you from? When I said Syria, he said with a shock, but you don't look like a refugee. I got so annoyed and asked him, but do refugees have specific appearance? He couldn't find an answer and started fumbling, especially also after he noticed the rash his organic products left on my hand. It was that moment when I myself understood on a deeper level the meaning of being a refugee. My sense of self has always been the same as when I was a citizen in my homeland. But clearly, people don't see me as I see myself. After that incident, I decided that I wouldn't let where I come from or my refugee status define me. I decided to start uh, adopt a new feeling of belonging to Sweden and started listening to Swedish language lessons instead of Arabic music, attended every activity I thought it would accelerate my integration process and broaden my network. I even decided to, I even decided to invest in a more sustainable future in here and um, join Stockholm University to do a master's program in order to learn how to think and analyze in a Swedish way. A good example that reflects my attitude at that time is a part of a speech I gave back in 2017. My speech says, I made a promise to myself that I would embrace the present and build a new life here in this new country, Vakrasvarje, beautiful Sweden. So let's create new memories with each other and fall in love with new places and learn a new language. Wow. I wish I listened to my advice then and created some happy memories. Unless we consider surviving a call with an agent from Arbitz von Medlingen, the job center, without being expelled, a happy memory. Or the CSN, the student financial aid, approving that I won't repay my debt for yet another year because I had no income, considered a happy memory also. Truth to be said, my integration journey here in Sweden has been so far neither enjoyable nor as successful as I wanted it to be. It is painful to say that, especially after all the efforts, hard work and time I invested. And I know you were expecting to hear a success story. And so am I. But after nine years in here, and after being forced to move nine times due to the shortage of accommodation and long waiting queues, I'm still unemployed and recently got an advice from an official job coach to change my name in order to increase my chances of getting a job. I'm still struggling to fit in the society with a very few Swedish friends. My integration journey feels lonely, especially when I compare it to my father's successful journey in Syria. But of course, when I think about how much I grew up, and improved on the personal level, I appreciate the journey. And I appreciate the most fundamental things I got here in Sweden, which were the feeling of safety and the equality of treatment for legal rights and education. And for these, I would forever be grateful to Sweden, no matter what. The reason why I'm standing here today and why I'm sharing all these personal stories with you is to invite you to think about your meaning of being a refugee. It was just until 23rd of February this year when Ukrainian people were called people instead of refugees. The journey of the refugee is not easy, and refugees may lose everything. Their homes, their loved ones, their limbs, but they always keep one thing with them throughout their entire journey, which is their humanity. No matter who the beast is attacking, me, your neighbor, or you, it is our problem, all of us. We are maybe different, yet we are all connected as humans. It is actually our shared responsibility 
to believe that we can create a new, better reality for ourselves and for others. I hope that from this place, we collectively begin to increase the awareness of the plight of refugees and their integration in the new society. And most importantly, I would like to say, you never know when the beast might attack you or when you would only have three choices left. And none of these choices is the right one. We need to create our fourth choice. We need peace. Thank you.